Hey, what is going on, guys? Nick Karen here, aka Clickwid, bringing you guys my 2018 wide receiver fantasy football rankings. This is for PPR drafts. If you guys are interested in my running back rankings, I did a video on that yesterday. Go check that video out. Uh, we went through 50 running backs. Today, we're going to go through 60 wide receivers. I'm going to try and keep it a little bit shorter today, but it's still probably going to be a fairly extended video. So if you guys enjoy this, make sure you drop a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And guys, I will have a link to my Google document in the uh, description below that's going to go through all of my rankings for every single position. We've got quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends ranked. Uh, so go check that one out, guys. It's pretty good information. I think I put a lot of work into it, so hopefully you guys can learn something, and hopefully it'll help you out with your fantasy drafts that are coming up. So with that said, let's check out the top 60 wide receivers. Again, this is for PPR. It doesn't change a whole lot for the most part for wide receivers. There are some players that are you know better big play guys, uh, like a Tyreek Hill, for example, is better in a standard league than he is in PPR. Uh, but we do go with PPR for our standard uh, as far as ranking goes. And the reason for that is because most leagues are actually now transitioning to PPR. ESPN standard is PPR. Yahoo standard is half PPR. So I just default to full PPR. I think that's kind of the, the more accepted uh, overall ranking system, I guess. So if you are interested in uh, just standard scoring, probably have to go check out another source. But like I said, a lot of these guys are pretty much going to remain the same regardless of scoring system. So uh, with that said, let's start off at number 60. And this is a guy that's actually helped a little bit by PPR, in my opinion. And that is Taewon Taylor of the Tennessee Titans. Now, it looks like he is going to be the slot wide receiver in this Tennessee offense. Tennessee offense should be vastly improved this year from where they have been in recent years. Uh, Taewon Taylor is some, somebody that I think could break out this year. I liked him as a draft prospect coming into 2017. So I do like him in 2018 to potentially be a guy that gets some decent targets this year in the Tennessee offense, especially if he keeps that that slot job. He is a guy that is very, very quick. We saw it in the preseason. He broke through, broke through with a big touchdown, and I think that he can do that in the regular season as well, at least a few times this season. Uh, that speed cannot be taught, and that agility is very, very good with him as well. At 59, we have another huge speedster. This is John Ross of the Cincinnati Bengals. Guy was a total bust last year, but I don't want to throw everything away with him yet. Um, he is a guy that is probably maybe the fastest player in the entire NFL right now. And I know a lot of people are going to say, no, it's Tyreek Hill. Go compare their 40 times. John Ross ran the fastest 40 time in recorded NFL history. Yeah, he's that fast. Don't forget about this guy. 40 time doesn't mean everything, but it does mean that you have the ability to just extend and get the defenses stretched back. Um, he can do a lot of different things on the football field. I, I love the fact that he's going to be able to be a deep threat for the Cincinnati Bengals. He has physical talent, guys. He's not just a speed guy. So don't completely rule him out yet. I would draft him late as like one of my final round picks just because I, I think he has the potential to break out this year as the number two wide receiver there now that Brandon LaFell is gone out of Cincinnati. So at 58, I have Deshaun Jackson of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's interesting because they're actually talking about moving him into the slot and allowing Chris Godwin to move outside and play opposite of Mike Evans in two wide receiver sets uh, and in three wide receiver sets as well. So that could be pretty interesting. Now, Deshaun Jackson does have 190 targets over the past two seasons. So this is something where you can still get some value out of him. I don't think he's going away anytime soon. I wouldn't expect him to average, you know, complete that average of 95 targets that he's had over the past two week, or two seasons. But I still think that he can definitely, you know, get 80 to 90 targets this season. And that should be valuable enough as a guy like him with a high yards per reception to at least return some value here uh, in the late 50s at wide receiver. Now at 57, we've got another guy that could be a big play guy. That is uh, the Chargers' Mike Williams. He is a second-year wide receiver as well. You're noticing a lot of these second-year wide receivers around this range because a lot of them didn't do much last year. Mike Williams is a guy that really didn't do much. He looked pretty bad last year, honestly, for the Chargers. But in the preseason, he's looked very good this year. There's rumors that he is actually going to uh, you know, have a chance to compete with Tyrell Williams early this year to, to potentially take over that um, starting outside wide receiver spot. And I think that he is a guy that could potentially be a big beneficiary of, of uh, the Hunter Henry injury and Antonio Gates being gone. He's a big bodied guy. He is a physical receiver and he's a guy that could be a red zone threat for the Chargers. We expect them to be a good offense. So eight touchdowns is not completely out of the question for Mike Williams this year. I'm not necessarily projecting that, but it's kind of his upside is, you know, eight to 10 touchdowns potentially. So I, I like that possibility and he's getting, he's a guy that's basically going undrafted in most leagues. So you know, look at him at least at the end of your draft. 
56, another Tennessee Titans wide receiver, Richard Matthews. A lot of people still believe that he could be the target leader here in Tennessee. Corey Davis is still probably the biggest upside guy on the team, but I like Richard Matthews where he's going right now. Again, pretty much free at the end of drafts, and he's a guy that's got a decent amount of targets coming his way. He did sign a new contract prior to the season, so we do expect that he is going to be a decent uh, contributor in this Tennessee offense. He's not going away, so I do like him. Uh, again, late rounds, not really a whole lot to be concerned about. If he doesn't do much, throw him back and pick up somebody else. It's a nice value where he's going right now. At 55, Kenny Galladay. Now, I actually am probably lower on Kenny Galladay than a lot of people are, and a lot of the hype is actually starting to rise on him because you're going to see that you're, you're seeing these rumors that he is potentially going to take over as the wide receiver two in uh, the two wide receiver packages that Detroit runs. The problem is, is that while he might be ahead of Golden Tate on the outside routes, the Lions actually run more three wide receiver sets than almost any team in the league. When they pass, it's almost always three wide receiver sets. So I'm not really going to take that as anything more than them just trying to hype up Kenny, Do Kenny Galladay. Um, I do like Kenny Galladay. I think he has physical talent, but I'm not overly excited about him as a, a contributor this season. I would like him more once one of those other two wide receivers, whether it be Tate or Marvin Jones, actually moves on to another team. Uh, then I think I'll be a little more excited about him, or you know, obviously once he has that full breakout. Now moving up to number 54, it's a rookie wide receiver, the first one that we're going to talk about, Michael Gallup of the Dallas Cowboys. Now, Michael Gallup, I think, has a real chance to be the wide receiver one in Dallas this season. He's a guy that's a prototypical size, speed type of guy. Um, he has physical ball tracking skills as well. He's kind of just, uh, I don't want to say like a, like a Des Bryant, but in a lot of ways, he is somewhat like Des Bryant. Not as big, not as physical, uh, but he is faster than Des Bryant, and he's just a guy that can you know, potentially be the wide receiver one in Dallas in a, in a weak depth chart at wide receiver. So I like that possibility, but, you know, again, he's a rookie. I wouldn't expect, you know, a thousand yards and 10 touchdowns or anything like that, but he's a guy that at least towards the end of the season could start to contribute, if, especially if the rest of the roster is not particularly living up to what we hope that they will. At 53, Marquise Lee of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, he is my number one Jacksonville Jaguars wide receiver. There's a whole lot of different guys there that are getting hype. DJ Shark, uh, D.D. Westbrook, you've got uh, Keelan Cole, you've got Dante Moncrief, you know, like, it, it just goes down, and, and, like, everybody has hype about them coming into this year, but the reality is that the Jaguars' passing game is not particularly good. The only guy that's really been super fantasy relevant in this passing game over the past five seasons or so is Allen Robinson, and Allen Hearns at times, who's now a part of the Dallas Cowboys, and like I said, I have him ranked below Michael Gallup, but... Um, honestly, though, the rest of these wide receivers I, I'm just not overly excited about. I think Marquise Lee might be the least physically talented of this whole bunch, which is crazy, but I think that he's the most entrenched as a guy that's going to get the most targets in the Jacksonville offense. Now, overall, I'm not expecting any of these guys to have like a big breakout season, but I think if I had to choose somebody, it's going to be uh, Marquise Lee. He also, by the way, led that team in targets last year, so I, I don't expect that to necessarily change. At 52, Anthony Miller, rookie wide receiver again, this time with the Chicago Bears. He could end up actually being the wide receiver here, no, wide receiver number two here in Chicago. That offense should be improved. He sh he's the kind of guy that could potentially contribute here in year one as a wide receiver. I think he's actually more set up to do so than Michael Gallup is. So that's why I'm taking him a little bit higher than Gallup. Um, I think that in the long term, I like Gallup a little bit better, but in the short term, I think that Anthony Miller's skill set is more kind of set up to be a guy that can contribute in year one, so I do like him. Number 51, Nelson Aguilar. He's a bit banged up right now, but Alshon Jeffrey might start the season on the pup list. This is something that is going drastically underreported, in my opinion. And even if Alshon is ready in week one to play, I don't think he's going to be 100%. So if Alshon Jeffrey's not 100%, who is there to throw to? Obviously, Zach Ertz, and you've got guys out of the backfield. You've got Darren Sproles. But beyond that, who are they throwing the ball to? I think that it's probably going to be Nelson Aguilar, and I like the upside that he presents at least early in the season. Even as a wide receiver, too, throughout the rest of the season there in Philadelphia, I think he has significant value. So I do like him, especially where he's being drafted again. Barely being drafted in most leagues. A lot of these guys are just not even being considered for fantasy, and I think that they have some serious upside. So I, like, I definitely like Aguilar where he's going. At 50, Chris Godwin, he's a guy that has a lot of hype about him right now, and we talked about him potentially being the uh, the opposite, uh, outside wide receiver opposite Mike Evans while Deshaun Jackson kind of slides into the slot, and I like that he has the physical skills to potentially be a wide receiver one. Unfortunately, Tampa Bay paid Mike Evans to be a wide receiver one, so I don't expect that, that, that to 
necessarily happen over the next couple of seasons, but he's a guy that could potentially make some big explosive plays this season, and I do like that he has the ability to, uh, you know, potentially take over as a wide receiver one if Mike Evans were to potentially get hurt, for example. So uh, that's always a good thing to keep in mind as well. Or if Mike Evans makes another stupid decision and knocks a guy down on the sidelines, like, what are we doing? So uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's a possibility for Chris Godwin as well. Uh, 49, Cameron Meredith, former Chicago Bear, now in the New Orleans system, and he is a guy that could potentially play slot for them, and I like that a lot. Drew Brees has used their slot, uh, that slot receiver position a lot throughout the years, uh, whether it was uh, Marcus Colston as kind of that big slot receiver, whether it was Lance Moore. He's used a lot of different guys in that type of role, and I think that you could end up seeing Cameron Meredith be the next guy that steps in there and contributes some significant fantasy value here in 2018. Um, Traquan Smith is another guy that you want to be a little bit on the radar, but, you know, kind of paying attention to him. Traquan Smith was a rookie wide receiver this year, and uh, I think that he could potentially end up taking that job away from Cameron Meredith, or if Cameron Meredith ends up moving outside, Smith could move into the slot. Either way, I like both of these guys as just somebody to pay attention to early in the season. They might both go undrafted in your league, and if they do, you can kind of watch, see what happens, see where the targets are going, see what the playing time looks like, and then just kind of make your decision from there. But either way, I want you to pay attention to more than just Michael Thomas in this passing game. There is value to be extrapolated beyond just Michael Thomas. At 48, New York Giants wide receiver Sterling Shepard. Uh, he's a guy that was banged up last year. It's a crowded offense, but he's expected to be the slot wide receiver there. He had 105 targets in 20, 2016, and that was with Odell Beckham on the roster. Now, I mentioned that they do have a crowded offense. Now, Evan Ingram's there. Um, they did also, of course, add uh, Saquon Barkley out of the backfield. So they have a lot more pass catchers now. But even if he only gets like 90, 95 targets, I think he's going to go uh, lower in the drafts than where he's going to finish on the season. Shepard is a guy that does have physical ability, and I, I like what he can do on the field as kind of a complimentary piece there in New York. He's not going to take over for Odell Beckham or anything like that, but I do think that he has some pretty good value here. 47, Paul Richardson of the Washington Redskins. Now, he is actually a guy that I'm fairly high on. A lot of people have him ranked in like the 70s at wide receiver. He's going undrafted in almost every league. Uh, a lot of people actually don't think that he is going to be able to, to be the wide receiver one there. I disagree. I think that I like him actually better than Josh Doxson at this point. Doxson has just failed to do anything on the field. And Paul Richardson, while he wasn't amazing, he was a good contributor in Seattle last year. And I think that there's a good possibility that that happens again this season. I think he's more set up to be just an every week type of quality wide receiver for Alex Smith there in Washington. Uh, and again, I think that I'm more hyped about him than I am Josh Doxson. So just keep that in mind. That's my personal opinion, but I just don't see it in Josh Doxson at this point. I, I, I'm pretty much throwing him away, and uh, and I'm going with Paul Richardson. I think he's going to be the guy that leads that team in targets, receptions, potentially even touchdowns, unless it's Jordan Reed. 46, DJ Moore, wide receiver of the Carolina Panthers. This is the guy that I had ranked the highest among all rookie wide receivers coming into the draft. And he went number one uh, among wide receivers. So, uh, yeah, he's definitely a guy that has physical talent. I'm not necessarily certain that he's going to take over and be the wide receiver one for them in year one. But at the same time, he has the physical ability to be a wide receiver one going forward. He's a good guy that can play out of the slot. He can play out wide. He can do it all kind of as a receiver. And that's got some serious value for a team that doesn't have a lot of guys that are great pass catchers. So, uh, I do like DJ Moore. There's a little bit of a concern, like I said, about the targets with the other guys there in that offense. There are a lot of pass catchers there, but I still think DJ Moore has some value, and he could be very, very good, especially if Devin Funches or somebody gets hurt. At number 45, Devontae Parker. The talent's there, but like Josh Doxson, it's just... I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. I think he has a better opportunity than Doxson does, just because there's not as much competition in Miami. But at the same time, uh, we haven't seen it. We have not seen it out of Devontae Parker. Um, that also reports that he's had a horrible training camp. So I've actually moved him down on my list since the beginning of when I started a ranking. And he might continue to slip depending on how things go leading out to the end of the preseason. At number 44, Tyler Lockett. This is another guy that I'm higher on than consensus right now. And uh, one of the big reasons for that is because Doug Baldwin is hurt right now. Uh, he's not 100%, and I'm not sure he will be 100% to start the season. Seattle's insisting that he's going to be ready to go. But if he's not, Tyler Lockett slides in as the wide receiver one there in Seattle, at least for the first couple of weeks. And I think a lot of people are not realizing that Tyler Lockett was used pretty significantly last year still. He, was, he had, like I think, 70-something targets last year off the top of my head. And uh, I think that goes up this season. 
Uh, they don't have Paul Richardson there. They don't have Jimmy Graham. They've vacated a ton of targets, and they really didn't bring in anybody. So I do expect that Tyler Lockett's going to get some significant targets this year. He could push for 100 targets, and if he does that, he's the kind of guy that could explode this season and have a pretty big season. So uh, look out for him. He's got the physical ability to do it, and uh, I've got him ranked a lot higher than most people do on my list. But don't draft him here. Don't draft him as the 44th wide receiver off the board, but, you know, Draft him at the end of your draft knowing that you could get the upside of like a, a top 30 wide receiver potentially. Jordy Nelson, uh, still a red zone threat now in Oakland. Uh, I don't think that he has it anymore, but I think that you still have to consider that Oakland maybe doesn't care. Um, and if they don't care, then why should we, right? Uh, if, if John Gruden's willing to trot him out there and he's a, an 80% version of what he was in, in Green Bay or even like a 60% version of what he was in Green Bay, he still could have value because they could just sit and pepper him with targets. So I, I don't love Jordy Nelson this year. I think I have him ranked, ranked lower than consensus, but still the touchdown upside is there and you can't really overlook that. You, you, have, to, you have to keep that in mind. Uh, Will Fuller at 42 of the Houston Texans, crazy productive last year with Deshaun Watson, but I think it's unsustainable production, to be honest. I don't expect him to get a ton of targets this season, and he does also himself have some health concerns, so just keep that in mind. Uh, don't overdraft him, but get him in like your best ball formats if you're in a best ball draft. I really, really like Will Fuller uh, because he's the kind of guy that could have those big explosive weeks, but he also could have some weeks where he's not going to do much. He could have a, a week where he does one catch for 26 yards, you know, something like that. And that's not all that valuable for your fantasy team. But then the next week he might go, you know, six, six, seven catches for 140 yards and a touchdown or two. And in that case, he's hugely valuable. But unfortunately, it's really hard to predict with a guy like this that's kind of just like a speed, um, not a great size guy and not a guy that gets significant targets either. At 41, I have Robbie Anderson of the New York Jets. Now, Robbie Anderson is a guy that I'm a little bit concerned about because he does have some DWI and like all kinds of different potential issues coming up here. So I don't want to overdraft him, but I think that the physical talent is there, and I'm not really sure that anybody else in this Jets offense has much upside, to be honest with you. I like Quincy Inunua, but like as kind of a super late guy in deep leagues. So Robbie Anderson has the upside to potentially be a wide receiver too. So we are going to draft him here. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm not overly excited about him. Number 40, Pierre Garçon. A lot of people have him as the wide receiver one still in San Francisco. But if you paid close attention, Marquise Goodwin, I think, has taken over that job as the wide receiver one. Uh, again, I'm lower on him than most people are. He does have history in this offense where he was very, very productive in the past. But I'm still not overly excited about him with his age coming off of a major injury. It, it just doesn't all add up to me at this point. 39, Kelvin Benjamin, Buffalo Bills, similar to Robbie Anderson, where I think that there's serious upside in a bad offense still. <laughs> I think that he's the kind of guy that could be getting 120 targets this season. And even if he only catches 60 of them, he still could be pretty valuable. So I like that out of Kelvin Benjamin, just be, based on the fact that he's going so late in drafts. Um, and, and they might, like I said, they might not be high quality targets. He might only catch half of them on the year, but he's a big physical guy and a guy that is a good red zone threat as well. Kenny Stills at 38. I have him ranked ahead of Devontae Parker. Like I said, uh, I just think that he has the more potential to break out at this point. If you look at the advanced metrics between these two guys, you're going to see that Kenny Stills is a lot more effective on a per target basis than Devontae Parker has been throughout his career. So uh, again, I'm just a bigger fan of Kenny Stills at this point. I'm not super high on him, but I'm somebody that I would draft him ahead of Devontae Parker. At 37, Julian Edelman, New England Patriots. He's suspended for the first four weeks of the season, and he's coming off of an injury as well. Uh, but to me, I just think that I would still stick with Julian Edelman. Uh, I, I think that the, the New England Patriots offense has always been built around having that big slot guy, or at least for the past, I don't know, 15 years at this point, it seems like it's been built that way. So I, I really would not expect that uh, that's going to change anytime soon. They don't really have a whole lot of other guys that are really easily able to slide into the slot. So once Edelman does come back, yeah, you have to take a zero in the first four weeks, but obviously you slide someone else in your starting lineup for that time. And once Edelman does come back, I think that he's pretty much the same guy that he was before. He's not a wide receiver one, and he might not even be a wide receiver two, but I think at the very worst, he's a high-end wide receiver three. Uh, so that's why I'm drafting him here at 37. Uh, the value, I think, is just too much for him. At 36, a guy that's pretty similar in a lot of ways to Julian Edelman, Cooper Cup. He may not have the agility of a Cooper, of, uh, of uh, Julian Edelman, but he does have that role, and he does have the similar body style and body shape 
Um, so I like him as well, but he's just, I, I think they're in a more crowded offense there in St. Louis, especially in St. Louis, Los Angeles. Now that they've added, uh, Brandon Cooks to that offense as well, replacing Sammy Watkins. I think Brandon Cooks is a better fit for that offense. So I'm a little concerned that Cooper Cup is not going to lead the team in targets this year, like he did last year. So that is something that's a little bit concerning, but at the same time, I think he's still going to have some pretty decent value. 35, Jamison Crowder of the Washington Redskins. I think he matches Alex Smith's kind of playing style pretty well. So I have him ranked the highest of any of the uh, Washington wide receivers at this point. And I think that he has uh, at least decent upside this season to get back to where he was a couple of seasons ago when he's starting to break out. Now I have Marquise Goodwin at 34. I mentioned before that I have him ranked pretty high, I think, among average draft position guys. Um, I, you know, I, I guess in comparison to average draft position, I should say. Um, but I think that Marquise Goodwin has the potential to break out this season and be a pretty damn good fantasy wide receiver. I don't expect him to be a wide receiver one, but I don't think wide receiver two is out of his range of outcomes. Um, he was pretty good last year on a per target basis. Jimmy Garoppolo loves him. Coaching staff seems to like him and he has elite speed and physical skills as well. He's a small guy though. So there is the injury concern as well. At 33, Robert Woods, I have him ranked a little bit ahead of Cooper Cup just because on a per game basis when he was actually playing, he was more productive than Cooper Cup last year. He finished 33rd last year in only 12 games. So I have him ranked again 33rd. Um, but I think that again, adding Brandon Cooks to that offense is going to make it so that he does get a little bit fewer targets on a per game basis. And I also think just overall that Los Angeles offense is going to take a little bit of a step back. I still expect them to be very good, uh, but the efficiency is almost unsustainable for any team. So I, I don't expect that to happen again, but I still think he'll be pretty good. 32, Devin Funches, Carolina. Uh, he was pretty good last year. Underrated talent. Still a top wide receiver in an NFL offense. Um, I think a lot of people are expecting that Greg Olson's going to step in and just be that the top target there. And I, I don't expect that to actually happen, honestly. I really don't. Uh, so I've got Devin Funches a little bit higher than most people do, but I, I do think that he is uh, still a pretty quality wide receiver. Manuel Sanders at 31 of the Broncos, above average route separation on every route last year, despite being visibly injured on the field. Uh, whether he was playing against man coverage, whether he was playing against press man coverage, it really doesn't matter. He was a really good receiver last year on a, uh, as far as like actually route running and creating separation goes. It's just that the team couldn't get him the ball. It's such bad quarterback play. So I do expect that Case Keenum's going to step in and be at least a little bit of an improvement for them. And I expect that Emmanuel Sanders is going to be back to being healthy. So I do like him again this season. Um, I have him a little lower than I would have previously just because I'm not entirely sure that he's completely recovered from his injuries. But uh, if he is, he does have wide receiver two upside as we've seen in the Denver offense over the past few seasons. Randall Cobb at number 30. Don't be concerned about this rumor that he's getting traded. I do not think that's going to happen. That was a rumor that was put out and I think what ended up happening is that we learned that it was actually teams inquiring about trading for him. It wasn't the, the uh, Packers going out there and saying, hey, we want to trade Randall Cobb. They were just taking in offers and Every responsible team should do that. If, if somebody's offering something for any player on your team, you should look at what they're at least offering. So I don't think that that's a bad thing necessarily. Uh, but at the same time, there is you know a possibility that he does get traded. Still, I like the possibility of him playing this Green Bay offense and being the wide receiver too for Aaron Rodgers. We've seen it be productive in the past. Um, I still like uh, Geronimo, Geronimo Allison as the wide receiver three there as a deep sleeper. But Cobb will be just fine. I don't think that we have too much to be worried about with him. Sammy Watkins at number 29. I expect him to take a step forward in the Kansas City offense. I think that's more suited for him uh, than the uh, Los Angeles offense was last year where he stepped in and played on a very short training camp for them. I just think that there wasn't a great setup for him in Los Angeles, and I do expect that there's going to be a significant improvement for him this season here in Kansas City. I think there's an actual outside possibility that he outscores Tyreek Hill this year. I know. Don't, don't come after me. It's just, I think it's a possibility. Okay, guys? Number 28, Josh Gordon of the Browns, still not practicing with the team. They're, they keep saying he's going to be out there. Well, where, where he at, though? I don't see him out there. I don't necessarily expect that he's even going to play in week one. So there is some concern about when Josh Gordon is actually going to get onto the field. Of course, we know the talent. He has wide receiver one overall upside. So, I, I mean, seriously, the, the concern at this point is more so when he's going to get onto the field. Um, and really similar to Julian Edelman, honestly, in that way, because uh, he... He's a guy that could produce big, big numbers when he's out there, but we just don't know when he's going to be out there. So uh, that's a little bit of a concern. 
Number 27, Michael Crabtree of the Baltimore Ravens, wide receiver one right now in Baltimore, at least on the depth chart. Uh, so, you know, he's a guy that could get a pretty decent number of targets. I like John Brown as a real late round sleeper as well. Just if you guys are paying attention here, um, I have him ranked just outside of this list. But I do think that uh, Michael Crabtree is the guy that you want to own overall there in Baltimore. The, the Ravens offense actually passes more than most people would expect. Over the past few seasons, they actually have passed the most than any other team. Uh, so there is targets for Michael Crabtree. There's targets for John Brown. Um, that's, they won't necessarily be high-quality targets because it's Joe Flacco throwing the ball. But, you know, overall, I still like the possibility of him performing this season. I don't think that he has a bad floor. So I like Michael Crabtree where he's going right now in drafts. At 26, we have Alshon Jeffrey. I mentioned before that he could start the season on the pup. Very, very similar to Josh Gordon in that aspect. We just don't know when he's going to be on the field. But we have actually seen Alshon perform recently. So uh, I, I'm a little more confident, actually, that, jo that uh, Alshon Jeffrey is going to be there in week one. And I think he's in a better overall situation than Josh Gordon is. So if he's out there, I expect him to, to perform pretty well. But I just, like I said, I don't know when he's going to play. So that's why I have him ranked a little lower. Number 25, Corey Davis, Tennessee. I, I mentioned him before. I think that he's the most physically talented receiver in this offense. I think that he has the potential to break out and potentially be a league winner for you. But unfortunately, he's stuck in an offense that we haven't seen it from him before. Uh, he was a rookie last year, and he's a young player as well, but we just don't necessarily know what he's going to be able to do on the field. They have other targets there. They've got Taewon Taylor. They've got Richard Matthews. They've got other guys that can catch the ball like Delaney Walker and Deion Lewis. So there's a lot of potential target competition there for Corey Davis, and I don't expect him to be like a 150 target guy, but if he catches you know, 80 passes this season, he's going to be a pretty, uh, pre pretty significant value where he's currently being drafted, so I like that. Number 24, this is the start of the wide receiver twos, Juju Smith-Schuster of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm a little concerned that he is in a, in a bad situation as well, at least in terms of targets, a lot like Corey Davis, but this is a guy that has crazy, crazy upside. We saw it when Antonio Brown went down. He stepped in and performed ridiculously. So I, I'm, I really, really like what he can bring to the table. James Washington being added there this offseason is a little bit of a worry for me, though. So I'm, I'm not entirely sold on Juju Smith-Schuster, but I still think you could draft him as a low, low, low wide receiver two. I would prefer to have him as a wide receiver three so that I don't have to start him each and every week in most leagues. But at the same time, though, I, if I did have to, I wouldn't be overly concerned about it. I do think that he's going to give you those splash games, but he could also give you the type of game where you pretty disappointed in him as well so it's going to be a roller coaster ride potentially for smith schuster but he's got the physical talent and his name's juju and he's in phase phase up baby all right 23 marvin jones uh detroit lions kenny galladay is the guy that i'm a little bit concerned about here in this offense just because uh when kenny galladay was on the field marvin jones was about five points less per game in a ppr league uh when kenny galladay was out there that's a huge drop now, granted, it was a relatively small sample size, but still, it's something to be concerned about that Kenny Galladay is pulling that many targets away uh, from Marvin Jones. So we do have to be a little worried about that, but on a per-target basis, there aren't many players that can perform better than Marvin Jones. Um, I, I think that he's still a pretty good player, and I'm not overly concerned about him enough that I wouldn't draft him. Um, I think I would just, like I said, draft him as a low-end wide receiver too, and I do have him in fantasy leagues this year, so I'm not too low on him. Brandon Cooks, Los Angeles Rams at number 22. Incredible production throughout his season or throughout his career so far, despite playing in a few different offenses. Now, granted, he's played with Drew Brees and Tom Brady, so I'm not, I'm not gonna try and sell it to you that like he's some amazing player that's you know completely system doesn't matter. But he's stepping into another really good system, and he's taking over for Sammy Watkins, who was not all that productive last year, but I think he's better built for this offense. Brandon Cook. Brandon Cooks, in my opinion, is by far and away the wide receiver one there in terms of talent. So I do think that Sean McVay is going to find a way to get the ball in his hands. Um, don't be too overly excited about him. Don't draft him as your wide receiver one. But I think as a wide receiver two, I think I have pretty. I think he has a pretty good upside. Golden Tate, number twenty-one. We talked about him already. I do have him ranked highest of the Lions wide receivers, and not everybody does. Um, there's a rumor again that he's not going to start in two wide receiver sets. But I already mentioned that the, the Lions run more three wide receiver sets than like any team in the league. So I think he's going to be out there pretty much every passing down. I'm not worried about it. I still think he's going to get a good number of targets. And I think he's a great value where he's going. Number 20, Chris Hogan. This is a guy that I have ranked quite a bit higher than most people do. The consensus ranking it has him lower than 30 in most uh, on most sites. So to me, Chris Hogan is a guy that could potentially be a wide receiver one this season. 
Seriously, he has that type of upside. People don't realize his pace was about 900 yards and 10 touchdowns in 2017 uh, before he got hurt. So that's a pretty good pretty good uh, setup. If, if you could get 900 yards and 10 touchdowns out of a guy, I would be pretty damn happy about that personally. And that was in an offense that had Julian Edelman. It had other receivers there. And I just think that he's stepping into a better situation now that Julian Edelman suspended to start the season. They've lost other targets. I, I just think overall you're stepping into a much better spot. He doesn't have to compete with Brandon Cooks now. Um, so I think the targets are going to be there for him. I expect that he is going to perform as a low-end wide receiver one, high-end wide receiver two to start the season at least while Edelman is out. And then beyond that, who knows? But I still think that he has the possibility of finishing this season as a wide receiver one or a wide receiver two at the worst. So I really like, I really, really like Chris Hogan. He's one of the guys that I'm highest on, I would say. 19, Jarvis Landry of the Cleveland Browns. Yes, I do have him ranked ahead of Josh Gordon. I'm not a huge Jarvis Landry fan. If you follow me on Twitter at Clickwood TV, you probably have seen me tweet about Jarvis Landry before. I don't like the guys that are inefficient with their targets. When they get targeted a ton and they don't do a lot with it, yeah, he catches a ton of passes. Great. At eight yards per reception. That's awesome. That's like running back production as a wide receiver. And uh, to me, that's just not all that valuable. I want a guy that can do more on a per target basis. However, Jarvis Landry is a guy that's going to get a ton of targets. As long as Josh Gordon's out, who the hell else are they going to throw the ball to? Seriously. Like they don't have a lot of targets if Josh Gordon's out. And the fact that they moved Corey Coleman, I mean, a lot of the a lot of the targets that I was worried about with Jarvis Landry early in the season, in the preseason, I, I'm not as concerned about it anymore. I, I thought he was going to have to get 150 targets to be a quality player this year, at least 130 targets to be like a fantasy, you know, like get, getting 90 receptions type of a thing. Uh, and I just don't see that happening if Josh Gordon's healthy, and I don't see that, or if he's on the field, and I don't see it happening if they had Corey Coleman and all these other guys to catch the ball. But now with all these concerns about all those guys, and one of them's completely gone, I think there's a good possibility that he gets there. So uh, I did move Jarvis Landry up quite a bit. I think I moved him up like 10 spots from where I originally had him ranked. So um, you see I'm moving up on Jarvis Landry. It makes me just freaking sick, but, you know, it is what it is. You have to take the talent, if it, the, the production, if, if it's there, even if the talent's not necessarily there. 18, Tyreek Hill of the, um, uh, of the Chiefs. And I mentioned him before as a guy that just puts up huge numbers on a per-target basis. Doesn't get a lot of targets, though. So that is something to be a little bit concerned about. His touchdown production is completely unsustainable. He scored every one of his touchdowns from outside of the red zone this past year. That's insane. That's like, no one does that. And I know, he's super fast. I get it. He's a physical beast. And he's a guy that just gets past defenses. But I don't expect that that can possibly continue to happen on a, 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 as the type of pace that it was. Yes, Patrick Mahomes is more built to actually get the ball to him down the field. But Still, Alex Smith was the most efficient deep passer in the NFL last year. I know it's insane, but he was. So I don't expect Patrick Mahomes to be able to step in and do better than the best guy from last year. So uh, again, over the course of their careers, I like these guys together. But at the same time, I don't think Tyreek Hill has the upside to be a top five wide receiver this season. I just don't see it. Um, so I'm, I'm lower on him than consensus, but I, I still think he's a good player. If you get him down here at this type of range, go for it. To me, I wouldn't draft him higher than this, though. Doug Baldwin, Seattle Seahawks, number 17. I think that he is going to start in week one, but he might be banged up. Um, I mentioned before, this is why I'm a little bit higher on Tyler Lockett than other people are, but I do like Doug Baldwin. I think that he's a good quality wide receiver and a reliable guy in a Seattle offense that doesn't have a whole lot of other big playmakers in it. So you have to take that type of quality and just the target premium, that kind of stuff, whenever you can get it. You just want to try and get it as much as you can, as many targets as you can, and Baldwin certainly fits that bill. 16th, Allen Robinson of the Chicago Bears. New offense for him. He's moving from Jacksonville, uh, and obviously he was hurt. So there is concerns here uh, that he's not going to be able to do what he did a couple of seasons ago when he was a top elite wide receiver. But he is still a potential target monster in an offense that we expect to be really, really good this season. He has shown before that he can be an elite wide receiver. So I've got him ranked here as a mid wide receiver two, and I think that's pretty safe. I think worst case scenario is that he's like a low end wide receiver two, uh, maybe maybe a high-end wide receiver three, I think, at the worst, uh, is as long as he stays healthy. So where you're getting him right now, I think that he's a pretty good value and fairly safe with upside, and I like that. Number 15, Adam Thielen, Minnesota. A lot of people have him ranked ahead of Stephon Diggs. I don't, but I still think he's a good quality player and still a guy that could finish as a wide receiver one. I just personally think Stephon Diggs is a more talented player, so it's really as simple as that. 
Demarius Thomas at number 14, not a sexy name anymore. This guy used to be the guy that was going like first, second, third, fourth at wide receiver. Now you get him in like the mid-teens at wide receiver, late teens, even into the 20s in some leagues because people just are more excited about drafting guys that have sexier names. You know, the the Tyreek Hills, the, um, uh, you know, the, the guys that are going later in the drafts. And, and I just personally think that I like Demarius Thomas a little bit more just because I think the targets are more likely to be there. The offense should be better than it was last year. And Demarius Thomas has been good. If you go back and look what he's done, the touchdowns have been a little bit down, but touchdowns can also be a little bit fluky as well. And like I said, I expect the offense to be better, so I like Demarius Thomas to have a little bit of a bounce-back season this year. And as a low-end or a high-end wide receiver, too, I think that the upside is there for him as well. And I just don't think there's much of a downside for him as long as he stays healthy. Like, worst-case scenario, he's still a wide receiver, too. Amari Cooper at 13th, I do have him ranked higher than most people do. I think the targets are going to be crazy for him there. Oakland and the coaching staff, John Gruden has come out and said, the offense runs through Amari Cooper. And if that's the case, you could see him potentially lead the league in targets this season. And if he does that, even if he's inefficient with those targets, he's still going to be a fantasy beast. Amari Cooper is a super talented player. Yeah, he's a little inconsistent, but I, I still think the upside is massive with this guy. 12, Mike Evans of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Again, touchdown upside here for this guy. A, a big physical beast type of a player. But there is more competition now for targets with Chris Godwin there. Deshaun Jackson still getting a good number of targets. They did add the running back, Ronald Jones, although I'm not expecting Ronald Jones to get all that many catches or anything. But, you know, there's more competition for overall touches in that back in that offense than there was in previous years. Jameis Winston's also going to miss the first four weeks of the season with uh, the suspension that he received. So... Uh, there's a little bit of a concern here with Mike Evans that he's going to have a slow, rocky start to the season, although he actually really didn't see much of a difference between when Winston was targeting him and Fitzpatrick was targeting him. So I'm not overly concerned about it, but there is a tough start to the season for him. Uh, good defenses that he's going up against, so you, you do have to pay attention to it a little bit. Number 11, Larry Fitzgerald, Arizona Cardinals. Fitz is a beast still, guys. He's still gotten 100 more or more receptions, 107 or more receptions in three straight seasons. He's old. I get it. The age is a concern. He's not a sexy name anymore, just like Demarius Thomas. But man, this guy gets a ton of targets, and I think he still has a good possibility to finish as a wide receiver one in PPR formats this season. Number 10, Stephon Diggs. I talked about him a little bit more. I, I see the Antonio Brown comparisons, guys. I, I don't think he's, I don't want to say he's Antonio Brown, but like the physical talent is there. This is a guy that is an amazing route runner, like a truly ridiculously good route runner, unbelievable route runner, and a guy that has physical talent to go along with it as well. So I love that. I love this Minnesota offense this season. I think they should be pretty damn good. They should be able to run the ball and pass the ball. Kirk Cousins is an upgrade from Case Keenum as far as, you know, just like overall passing volume. You would assume they're going to give him more opportunities than they gave Case Keenum. So I think there's more targets to go around, and I like Stephon Diggs in that type of situation. I think he's a wide receiver one this season. T.Y. Hilton at number nine. Andrew Luck is back. The last time that we saw T.Y. Hilton with Andrew Luck, he led the NFL in receiving yards. He was still over 1,000 yards last season without Andrew Luck. T.Y. Hilton, in my opinion, is locked in as a wide receiver one this season. I love his upside. He could potentially be a league winner for you as well. He's going way lower than he should be in a lot of leagues. Number eight, Devontae Adams of the Green Bay Packers could potentially lead the NFL in touchdown receptions. He was second last year in the, uh, in the entire league without Aaron Rodgers playing the full season. I mean, yeah, I want that in my offense. I want that on my fantasy team if I can get it. Devontae Adams has had down seasons before, but the physical talent is there, just like we mentioned before. And he just has Aaron Rodgers. Uh, he, he gets a good connection with Aaron Rodgers. And I, I think, obviously, being the wide receiver one in that type of an offense is, uh, is a great thing. Jimmy Graham, there is a concern that he's going to get more red zone targets than the other guys in the offense. But still, I think Adams and uh, Jimmy could both potentially push for 10 or more touchdowns this season. Number seven, A.J. Green. Again, not the kind of guy that's getting the hype that he used to, but still a very, very good productive wide receiver, and a guy that's going to get a ton of targets. The offense should be better this season, so the touchdown upside is higher. But uh, overall, I, I don't think there's much to be concerned about with A.J. Green. He's not at the point where, uh, with his age where he's going to fall off that cliff or anything, and I think just the targets are going to be there, the receiving yards are going to be there. He should be a good quality wide receiver one for you. Number six, Keenan Allen, Los Angeles Chargers, could lead the NFL in targets this season. There aren't a lot of competition there. Um, I mean, granted, yeah, they do have Mike Williams, the, the second-year wide receiver. They do have Tyrell Williams. They have Travis Benjamin. But overall, Keenan Allen's that wide receiver one alpha dog type of player, and I love that offense this year, so I love Keenan Allen as a wide receiver one. Number five, Michael Thomas of the New Orleans Saints. Breeze 
and him just seem to have a good connection. And I think Breeze's touchdowns overall should go up from where they were last year, which means that Michael Thomas's upside goes up as well. You gotta love anybody in this New Orleans passing game this season. That's it, it, like their their ADPs tend to be lower than they should be, just because people are low on Drew Brees, and I don't see it. I think that there's almost no way that Drew Brees isn't better than what he was last year. So I love Michael Thomas this year as a top five wide receiver. I think worst case scenario is he's a low end wide receiver one for fantasy, and that's pretty damn valuable. Number four, DeAndre Hopkins, dominant in 2017, led the NFL with 13 touchdowns, far and away, higher than anybody else. Um, did struggle in 2016 when he had erratic quarterback play, so there's some concern with that. Deshaun Watson, obviously, is going to be there, and Deshaun Watson and, and Hopkins seem to have a really good connection, but Hopkins had a great connection with everybody last year that was throwing the ball to him, so I don't think that Watson being there makes him necessarily a much better wide receiver than he was last year, and I do have him a little bit lower than most people do here at wide receiver four. A lot of people have him at wide receiver two or three. That doesn't mean that I don't like Hopkins. It's just that I like the other guys a little bit more. I think their offenses are a little bit better overall. So at number three, Julio Jones. I love Julio Jones as a wide receiver. I think that the touchdown regression is going to happen in a positive way this year. I think that he moves forward in touchdowns. Um, he only had, what, two last year, if I remember correctly, two or three. Like, super low touchdown number for Julio Jones. And yeah, he's not a guy that's going to give you 10 touchdowns probably, but he's a guy that could get you seven or eight touchdowns pretty easily with the same type of receiving yardage that he had last year, which was, I think, second in the NFL, maybe third at worst. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, but either way, he was a very productive receiver last year, and just I, I don't see any way that he drops off unless he gets hurt. So uh, with that said, we've got him at number three. Number two, Odell Beckham Jr. of the New York Giants. 1,300 yards and 10 or more touchdowns in all three of his first three seasons before he got hurt last year. I mean, you can't really do anything about him getting hurt last year. I think it's just an unfortunate situation. He should be fully recovered from the whole injury that he suffered last year. He's had a full calendar year to recover. This offense should be very, very good this year. They have so much talent. Their offensive line sucks. <laughs> I mean, that's a problem, of course. And Eli Manning, in my opinion, is not a great quarterback. But at the same time, he slings the ball to Odell Beckham. And that's what we want. We want Odell Beckham out there getting targets, and I think he's going to get that. I think 10 touchdowns is kind of something you should be expecting out of him, 12, 13, 1,400 yards receiving. I'm not concerned about him at all. He should be a great wide receiver one. And then at number one, we have Antonio Brown, and we should all expect him to be number one. He's the best fantasy wide receiver, maybe the best fantasy wide receiver of all time in terms of consistency. Jerry Rice is probably still number one, but... Um, Antonio Brown is so, so good. And in this era where they're spreading the ball around, the fact that he produces the type of numbers that he does is just crazy. I have him on his own tier as the number one wide receiver in fantasy this season. So with that said, guys, that is going to wrap up the top 60 wide receivers. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. We've got more wide receiver rankings coming, or more positional rankings, I should say, not wide receivers, but we've got tight ends, quarterbacks coming here over the next day or two, so be sure to stop on back for that. And of course, guys, I will have sleepers, busts, and, and other types of uh, videos coming here over the next couple of days as well, so be sure to stop on back for that. Thanks again, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, subscribe, share if you would. That would be awesome. And I'll talk to you guys again soon.